<coughs> well, I've got the piston and barrel back from the engineers, and they've honed it out. And he's told me it's about three thou oversize on the clearance now, three thou clearance roughly. Uh, the base say spec sheet says four to five and a half, so um, I'm going to measure it now as best I can. And I'll just zero the micrometer, and I'll see what readings I get. Well, that measures 71.9, as close as I can get it, and that's on the thrust side. Yeah, Well, I've checked this three or four times now, and um, I know you can't see that reading from there, but it's just on 4,000 clearance piston and bore, so quite happy with that. Well, I've double checked with the information from the service sheets. I don't know if you can see that, but it's showing the piston clearance is 4 to 5.5 thou, so I'm well within the tolerance there, that's okay. Well it's time to do some work on the cylinder head now and um, there are no broken fins that I can see and no repairs and it looks in pretty good order actually but I'm going to take it to pieces completely and um, give it a good clean and check the valves and valve guides and all that sort of stuff. The barrel's done, it's been honed out to the new piston the new Hepalite piston I've got. So uh, I'll be working on this over the next few days. Well I've got both spindles out now and um, there's a little thin washer missing on the inlet. It starts off with a thick washer, then the rockers, then a spring and then a thin washer and it was missing on this side but I found it on that side so I'll look out for that when I come to rebuild it.
Well, you can see the difference here between the old valve springs and uh, the new ones I've got. There's quite a bit of difference there. I won't show you the smaller ones because they're much the same. Well it's time for me to decoke this engine, this cylinder head sorry, and replace the valve guides. I've got two valve guides here, two brand new valves. These are the little punches I've made ages ago to knock the valve guides out. And um, I'll put it in the parts washer, get as much of the dirt and grease off as I can and jet wash it. And then make my mind up whether it's going to be um, powder coated or just uh, painted with the high temperature. Uh, black paint I can get so that's what I'll be doing now but I will warm up the cylinder head a little bit to uh, help get the old valve guides out I'll do that now Well, it took quite a bit of bashing to get that out. I had to heat it up quite a bit and the valve guide broke up on the way out, but I'm not bothered about that. But I chewed up my drift quite a bit, so I'm going to have to make a new one of those, but that's no problem. But it's come out clean in the end and uh, the hole looks okay. Well that one came out a bit easier, I think I've got the heat in the right place there, but uh, when I come to put the new ones in I'll put the cylinder head in the oven for a half an hour or so, get it up to about 110-120 degrees and then the new ones should go in quite easily, put these in the freezer for an hour or two and they should just fall in, should be okay.
Well, the valve guides are fitted now, and uh, the cylinder head came out of the oven about 90 degrees, and the valve guides came out of the freezer about minus six or seven, something like that. And the inlet was a bit tight going in, but the exhaust went in quite nicely, and they're both hard up against the shoulders now, so they should be fine. I'll just I'll just let it cool down now, and naturally see see how it goes. Well, it's time for me to put the valves back into the head. Um, I've given them a light lap in with some fine grinding paste, and I've also had them back to the engineers who've put them on their vacuum gauge and checked them out, and they've come back as perfect. There's no, there's no leaks, there's no problems. So uh, I'm going to uh, put the valves back in now, but before I do, I want to uh, lap the head to the barrel for a bit uh, with some fine grinding paste. And I want to do that before I actually fit the valves because I don't want grinding paste to get anywhere near the valve seats and things. So I'll be getting on with that now. And uh, as you can see, I've got the new valves, new valve springs, new collets and a new cap uh, for both the inlets and the exhaust. I've got a whole bunch of old and new collets and caps but the ones I've chosen are, are, are new and they're, they're perfect, so that should be fine. Well I've been about 15 minutes slapping these in and as you can see uh, that surface there is absolutely perfect and on the head itself really good so I'm quite happy with that lovely finish on the barrel yeah.
Well, the, the head and the barrel, the head's completely built up now with new valves, new guides, new springs, new collets, everything new. And I've locked the head to the barrel, so that should be fine. Well, the top of the engine's built up and finished now. Just needs a coat of paint. And um, this is the paint I'll use. It's a gloss black engine enamel. And I've used it before and it does a good job. I was going to have it powder coated but I decided not to for a number of reasons. But anyway, it's going to get this coat of paint. That should be fine. Well, the next part of the restoration will be uh, the, the bottom end of the engine. And I've got the crankcases back from the Vapor Blast guy. He's made a fabulous job. Quite brand new. Uh, new rocker covers, I've got new bearings, new Hepalite piston. Uh, the little end's okay and the big end's okay on the crank, so that's fine. So that's the next stage. I'll be working on this over the next week or so.